Institute. And uh, many of my long associated friends. And uh, comrades, participants of the Indian uh, course to various part of India. And all other <coughs> persons in our view, but it will be not great by any <coughs> administrator or the policy makers. The commission and who appointed the commission, the government and the report, all the Continent the one we see. Therefore, I would like to uh, <coughs> rename what we are doing today instead of a workshop. I would like to uh, say. collected inquiry into the subject of the question why it is necessary to know the self and steps to move ahead <coughs> as in the stage. So therefore I'm not going to give you a a regiment answer to this question or a very uh, well argumented and analytical conclusions about this question. But I would uh, encourage you and I would uh, urge you to join me in finding an appropriate answer to this question. Why it is necessary to know the self? And if we find it necessary, then we can consider the steps to move ahead. <coughs> we must not. We must not be uh, impatient and in hurry to find an answer to any question. My dear friend, Jiddu Krishna Murthy used to say repeatedly, "Sir, can you leave with a question?" without any, any hurriness to find a conclusion. <coughs> to leave with a question means to keep the forces of learning continue. Forces of learning continue is the only way to improve to my mind, to my personality, and uh, the society at large. Because the power of question keep you and your mind inquisitive, active, <coughs> and there is a, always a movement <coughs> ahead. When 
and you consider, I found the answer, I found the conclusion, then that is a, a full step to the forces of learning. And there will be no good place thereafter. And it is not necessary that conclusion or that, that answer you, you have found is the truth or the accurate. Because human mind is a very much conditioned and our thought is all limited. Unless and until we go beyond the limitation of our thought and our conditioning, we cannot gain that we have found the accurate answer to any of the questions. That's why the tradition of Jains in their philosophy a principle of anek shedvada this may be, that may be this also possible because each individual has a individuality and from that individuality, you will have a, a different way of looking to the truth, to the reality, to the facts. And you can't say the one is the correct and all the others are wrong. From different perspective and different ways of looking and the different directions or methods of looking, <coughs> one truth may be appear to us many different ways. So therefore to keep continue the inquiry, the search is a uh, absolutely necessary for everything and particularly such a serious question why it is necessary to know the self. <coughs> so we will try to go ahead in this inquiry jointly, collectively and uh, without any preconceptions and uh, <coughs> a kind of dogma <coughs> which is already framed in our mind. Let us uh, an open and free mind and try to <coughs> together. The togetherness has uh, its own dynamism and uh, that dynamism might help each other. <coughs> In every tradition, the community, the Sangha, is considered to be very important. In Buddhism, Sangha is one of the refugees. Among the three people, Sangha is one of the refugees. Sangha means togetherness, a pure relationship through which a cooperation is possible. 
and the cooperation is uh, the strongest and the most powerful way to achieve anything. One individual may not be achieve something. A heavy weight may not be able to lift by one person. But it can be easily lived by three persons if they can do better. And the cooperation and the collective effort as its own dynamism. For that, we must have a mindset which is free from prejudices for and against and openness and the eager to learn and the eager to accept if some reality which is wrong, different from your preconceived notions, otherwise uh, you may not be able to work moving the forces of learning. Having said that, as background of uh, our effort, now I am trying to come to the question which we have one <coughs> prepared for today's workshop or for today's our effort self. What is self? Well, Gandhi, you have heard for the last week on many points as I have gone through the subjects which I have spoken by the previous, previous speakers. You have a vast area of Gandhi's thought have been covered and you must find that Gandhi used the soul, the self, this word is uh, many times and for many different meaning or connotation, Swaraj, Swalampe, Swadeshi and so forth. He did not use this word from a mindset of uh, giving importance to self <coughs> or a kind of selfish mindset, but he used them with deep understanding of who I am, what I am for, what is my universal responsibility. From this viewpoint, he has used the word for many questions and many options and give it <coughs> without knowing the swar, you cannot understand what is swaraj. <coughs> the translation of Hind Swaraj in English, although 
it was done during Gandhi's lifetime and he had read them and approved them as gift. I am still not comfortable the translation so Raj is the home group in the Suraj has been translated as India's home group. <coughs> that was a very limited communication of the political system, not in real sense. The uh, larger and progressive men of Swaraj. And similarly, the Swadeshi, Swadeshi does not mean only for local productions. Of course, local productions has its own importance. But Mar Swami has made a long commentary what is Swadeshi. And uh, he made many comments that this is not Swadeshi, that is not Swadeshi, is not Swadeshi. Then he comes to the end. The sincerity is this Swadeshi. A mindset of uh, not duality, a sincerity. I'm giving only a few examples <coughs> how to look at self. <coughs> the human community of this globe. can be divided into two categories. The first category is the so-called the believers. In fact, today there are very, very tiny minority who are in need the majorities are not liberal. But in the official statistics, they will say the believers are much more and no believers are very few. Someone is born in Hindu family. He or she is considered as a Hindu, as a believer, although the child does not know anything about religion or about the Creator. And similarly, a Christian, a Muslim, a Buddhist. Religion is not a hereditary, it is to be learned and to be adopted. Having said so, the conception of self to the believers are different and the conception of self for non-believers are different. Then among the believers, they also can be divided into two categories. The first is uh, who believe into the Creator. Kishore Vadin in Indian and we say. There may be different concept of Ishwar, but some central power which creates the entire universe. And that there are few 
Aneshwar Vati, who do not believe into the curator, but they believe into the karmic force, karma and karma effect. For example, in India, there are six great different traditions among the Indian philosophers <coughs> of philosophy and karma. The Jains and the, the Buddhists and the Charvaks, the three are uneshwarvati. They do not believe in the creator. And the little group of Sankhya, the old Sankhyas, they are also uneshwarvati. All the rest, five great traditions are uneshwarvati. <coughs> And uh, then the other traditions coming from outside, the Christianity, the Islam, the Buddhism, and many others, all of them are in the category of Ishwarvati. <coughs> so by these two different sects, Their view of self <coughs> fundamentally differs from each other. And then, then among the non-believers, there may not be a philosophical differences, but each individual might have his or her explanation or concept of self. Whether he or she knows self or she does not know, he or she does not know self. But if you ask him, the person might have some answer to it. <coughs> For the common people, if someone asks, It is necessary to know the self. The answer would be, I know myself. What is necessary? Why do you ask me this question, the silly question? I know very well myself. This would, this kind of uh, reaction or this kind of mindset would be, I think, among the majority. Even the religious so-called followers might say, according to their own conception, tradition, they would say, I know, I know myself. And there may be some minority who may say, I don't know, but what is necessary to indulge in, in this uh, unimportant, silly question, it is necessary to know self or not know self. This kind of mind also I think. So keeping all these different views as a, a subject of inquiry and giving equal weighting and respect to the different views, the view of uh, people who believe in the creator the view of people who do not believe in the future, the view of people who never think about the necessity or unnecessary or what is self and what is not self. All these different views are matter, <coughs> equal important matter to be in and to find 
rational and scientifically verifiable answer to this question. I think that is uh, important. That is our, for the moment, our job. In this joint inquiry, the question that is being given. So therefore, we shall have to go in depth in these questions. I do not say anything. Group is right and that group is wrong. I just keep the different views for your constitution and people. Now I am touching a different issue. As a matter of fact, each person is become a person. In English we call it a person. In our language, a vekti or a photogal. Photogal is that very technical word. A vekti has two <coughs> important components. The one component is uh, commonality to all the and the other component is the unique feature which does not have similarity with any other. Only one individual has that quality or that entity but it doesn't share with any other. So by this tool, make a person. If anyone is not there, then that is not a person. It cannot be a person. The person is a constitute of an individuality and a commonality. Human society, we are belonging to human society. The all community has a common feature of our power of discriminating intelligence, power of thinking, body, speech, mind, all these are Apart from that, there is a very perversive common quality is uh, liking happiness and disliking this unhappiness of pain. That is all common. No one is looking for pain or unhappiness. No one dislikes happiness and pleasure. And similarly, every individual has the every right to <coughs> search and achieve happiness and to avoid and eliminate unhappiness and misery. That is also equal. <coughs> Everyone is equal.
And <coughs> apart from that, lighting is like looking for happiness and uh, avoiding the unhappiness. Try to achieve this. And then the third commonality is uh, the potential. Each individual has uh, the seed and potential to grow, to develop, and uh, to achieve the highest level. Human mind has uh, no limitation. It can go beyond of everything and become enlightened, the highest intelligence and energy. <coughs> so this potential is also equal to it. And at the same time, the uniqueness of each individual, which makes the person as individual, <coughs> is uh, his or her. Conditioning of mind and uh, orientation of mind, which makes the person different. Even the physical level, this planet Earth, at this moment, according to uh, official statistics, about 7 billion people are living. And you don't find 100% identical to individuals. Even the twin brothers or twin sisters, they may be look very similar, but yet they can be identified. They are still very subtle differences. That physical differences shows that there is mental and if you live into spirit, spirituality, <coughs> also such certain difference. Why a difference <coughs> is uh, always there in your physical body? <coughs> That is uh, symbolizing or that is manifesting the individuality or the uniqueness of the person, the individual. The person is being termed as individual. That means there is a uniqueness, uncommon thing. <coughs> not samastha, samastha, a vertical, the quality, the bone, or the dosh, whatever it may be, which makes the person a different identifiable by certain attributes. Otherwise, if you tell some printer or some sculpture to make a thousand face, which is entirely different, the sculptor may not be able to do that. But by nature, seven billion faces are not right. So that individual has the expression of an individual or a self, which in our concept becomes mean, high. So we have to understand the components 
and the uncompleted, which constitutes a person. <coughs> and now, what is that person <coughs> is to be examined, to be understood. Some individual has given name as a Divita and some other is giving the name of Yagyata. Once the name is uh, <coughs> attached to that person, someone calls Hey, Divita, and the Divita immediately responded, Yes, I am here. So, <coughs> the mental reaction is, I am Divita. And this is a, a concept of a self. But in reality, in Indian tradition, the names are not given before the child is born. Now the Western tradition, as soon well as uh, a child is conceived in the home of a mother, <coughs> they find some name and then they throw he or she was born as so and so forth. Even then, the name is given not coming naturally <coughs> with the person. It is giving and it is an agreement. This name is given to this and there is agreement. And then the language is always naturally. Words and the meaning does not have a tangible in separate relation. The relation is given by our thought with So the Devinda, <coughs> he might <coughs> immediately react as I am Devinda. But if you examine, you are Devinda. Before you born, are you Devinda? And uh, if your name is changed, from Divita to a Prasad, your individual will be to change. Today it is quite common practice that people are changing the making the identity <coughs> making the news people, I change my name from this to that, so on and so forth. And also the female flock when they marry to someone, the surveys are the same. But by changing name, the self does not change. If the name is self, then by changing the name, then your self will also be changed. It doesn't change. <coughs> then another misconception And by this way, if you search where are 
Baby, you are okay. You will find it very difficult to <coughs> pinpoint here I am. <coughs> this is me. Your mind, you will say, my mind is not very clear today. Still you put yourself somewhere else and you say, my mind is a safe and my mind is a happy and my mind is a clear and my mind is a unclear. My mind is able to concentrate, my mind is not able to concentrate. Mind, body, speech, whatever attributes and whatever things on which grossly you are thinking I am. Somebody use an unpleasant word to you immediately with anger react he or she abuse me and at that time a very tangible, solid, independent <coughs> me, I or you feel proud some achievement I have done this so the I is so permanent in your mind but when you question this where is I? Where is me? Introvertly, you try to find. Then it always says, shifting from one place to another place and hiding behind something else. <coughs> but it's so clever and so easy to come back. In English language, we call it ego. Ego does not need any ground, any solid ground on which it stands. Without any ground, ego comes back. And in the Indian language we call it Atma Dharma. The Atma Dharma, Ahamkar, <coughs> it comes back again and over again. And it delivers all of our action and all of our needs, but <coughs> it is uh, not able to find. So then we may say, it's okay, why, why should you search I? I function perfectly all right. I'm healthy, I do my job. I fulfill my responsibilities. What is necessary to, to search who I am, where is myself, how to identify myself. This may also be one of the answers in the process of searching the self. <coughs> so that is the, the second part of My suggestion <coughs> you may again consider whether the air is necessary or <coughs> not necessary. Now I am coming to the final or the third part of uh, the question what is necessary to know the self. <coughs> As I mentioned before, whenever the ego arises in your mind, in your thought, you feel you hold on, not only hold on, grasping on and 
independently, <coughs> inherently, tangibly, exist by its own nature as self. So that is the notion of self which we commonly have. You experiment yourself whenever you feel hunger, whenever you feel happiness or proud, a grasping of eye <coughs> is very clear there. And in that grasping, it does not differentiate the body, the mind, the speech, or the other attributes of you, but inherently by its own nature existing of a tangible eye is always you feel, you uphold on that. So that you conceive as yourself. Now the final question is that conception is a, a knowledge of self or misconception of self? That is a real question to me. In some, if that is knowledge of self, then did not do more inquiry. No worry, you know yourself. Each day, particularly when you are in a great agitated or in the anxiety or in the overwhelming thing, the, 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 the eye so clearly exists and you are grasping to that eye. And then, then you can say, I know, I know myself. But that notion is being challenged by examination how it exists. The existence of I is only in my mind or it is real tangible, identifiable, recognizable, is there not as I mentioned before. If you search it, then you will find this difficult between point. This is a fact. The holding on <coughs> your own notion of I always a uh, uh, independent inherently existing one. The childhood eye, the middle gate eye, the old gate eye, all throughout life, your body, your mind, your knowledge, all being changing consistently changing. But the notion of I, sixty years before I stand with I, and forty years <coughs> middle age I, and the present I, the differentiation. In Hindi we may call it the page. The I does not construct of a many attributes. There is a little field, there is a solutionic <coughs> existence by its own criteria existence I we always conceive and hold over that. Now the third portion is 
that end of holding the graph in on and the page not interdependent, not interrelated concept of I is the
just for existence itself is entirely <coughs> depend on the entirety of the world in which we live. Jiru Krishnamurti used to say a very uh, uh, <coughs> fond of this uh, sentence, you are the world, world is you. What <coughs> we try to communicate is inseparable interrelationship and the interdependentness of yourself <coughs> to the rest of the world. You may think I am here in Gandhi Institute where it is in the atmosphere and violence, terrorism, a war going somewhere in this area or in Europe. What is the difference to me? But in reality, there are connections. Even now the scientific knowledge is telling that a drop of pain here make a vibration a thousand kilometers away. And uh, which has something to do with the entire movement of the uh, Earth and the other planets. At the larger spectrum, the Earth, the Sun, the Moon and the other planets, they are hang on and moving with a rhythm all due to depending with each other. If one of the planet is destroyed and the whole balance of the uh, movement of other planets will be destroyed <coughs> and one human being is being uh, disturbed and uh, thereby every human being would be disturbed directly or indirectly. The interrelatedness can only be understood when you directly <coughs> perceive the nature of I. The nature of I is a matter construction of a combination of body, mind, spirit. <coughs> at one side and the entire universe at the other side, which are all interdependent. <coughs> Largely speaking, the nature is uh, of four basic elements. And then four basic elements is the uh, composer, it's a part of the entire solid world. Without these four elements, nothing can take a shape. Particularly our body is uh, composed of these four basic elements. The earth, the wind, the liquid and the warmth. And these four elements are <coughs> by nature opposite of each other. But with her balance and with her cooperation, it can make wonders. It can, it can uh, compose a very healthy human body. And the fifth element in this place, it allows to take shape of all the four elements, whatever element <coughs> one to compose. 
if there is no space, the four elements cannot move and make anything <coughs> to take shape. So these five elements are entirely interdependent. If your body is healthy, because all these elements are in balance and in cooperation with each other, they are not competitive. They are cooperating with, with each other. So yourself is, as a self, can exist if these four or five elements are in cooperation <coughs> and also it is in coherence and cooperation with the outside world, the society, the floor and the earth, the tree, the the sea, the river, all this, which makes the larger uh, vessel of all these uh, uh, existing things. So if there's something go wrong, or in disharmony with each other, <coughs> then this you have always witnessing the earthquake or the tsunami or the flood. Few weeks ago what had happened in um, Chennai and other places, I was very disheartened. A lot of uh, hundred years old trees in Ajaya, the Jasuku Society campus, have been very down due to the recent uh, cyclone. And all these are disharmony. Disharmony comes when the balance and cooperation <coughs> of the larger elements are disturbed. This disturbance are being caused by human misbehavior. Human uh, bad relationship with the nature. And uh, we are not uh, cohesive. We are not uh, uh, cooperating with the nature. And uh, the human beings are trying to uh, overpower or control the nature. Nature, <coughs> by its own law of nature, cannot be controlled by individuals. But the individuals has a misconception, particularly the egoistic individuals and the scientists and the technologists. They think the elements and the nature can be conditioned. Of course, you can condition in a small room. Warmth and cold, the temperature, whatever you want, that will condition. But you cannot condition the entire universe. And the misconception that I can do control the world the nature is the human error with the nature. And that human error is also come not realizing the self I am survive and exist because of the elements and the nature, the environment. And if I destroy the environment, in reality it's destroying me is not realized. That not realization is not realization of the self. <coughs> By not realization, <coughs> I do exist. How I do grow, <coughs> prosper, and uh, live happily due to my relationship with all the <coughs> surroundings and the larger universe. So therefore, unless and until you understood 
to your survival is uh, entirely 100% depend on the rest of the world. And there's nothing left which does not relate to you. So this is uh, the understanding of self. And if you understood that, then uh, you will able to uh, make your life uh, a kind of uh, kind of uh, harmonious with the rest of the thing. And for that, not only realizing the self, the self has uh, so many different aspects. <coughs> As I mentioned, your body is uh, composed of the four elements in the fifth element and also your mind is uh, composed of perception and conception. Conception is being caused by the perception and the perceptions are being distorted by the conception <coughs> and uh, misconception which lead to your conflict with the rest of the world. All the conflicts are production of thought. And thought has uh, so many misnotions and misconceptions that leave your negative emotions arise and therefore the disharmony and conflicts <coughs> arise. So the understanding of the, your situation, how you can survive. In the primitive age, <coughs> there is a <coughs> saying that survival of the fittest. And that age has gone. Today also, the uh, survival of the fittest and uh, rule of the younger is prevailing <coughs> in our society in a different form. But in reality, in the 21st century, the survival is depend on your wisdom, your intelligence. Uh, today we have to say the survival of the <coughs> wisest person. The wisest person can only survive and the rest of the people cannot survive who are not understanding who I am, how I came into being, how my relationships with the rest of the universe, these people cannot be survived. Even they might survive, they are not able to lead a happy and meaningful life. <coughs> so therefore, if you wish to have happiness and a meaningful life, you have to understand how you exist. How you exist with relation <coughs> of the rest of the things entire universe. And the individual has uh, so many capacities. An individual is children to <coughs> parents and parents to his or her children. Brother and sister to that of relationships, neighbors or community, or nationality, so on and so forth. So if you realize that 
my existence is a combination of a discipleship, a children, a parent, a husband and wife, a brother and sister, <coughs> and all this coming together makes me as an individual. Therefore, I have a particular responsibility to my teacher, to my parents, to my wife or husband, to my children, to my neighbor, and to my community, to my nation, and to the entire universe. As I mentioned right before, there are equal <coughs> of all living beings. Therefore, we shall have to treat all living beings <coughs> as, as one. But that can be done through our limit, limited outreach and our limited capacity. <coughs> we have to think the entire universe I have a responsibility to each one of these sentient beings. But to serve them, to benefit them, my reach is the first way to my family and to my village, to my community, to my town, to my nation, and through that to the entire world. Gandhi discussed in his uh, Supreme Court why I should work for the Indian people or for India. Because uh, I wish to serve the entire humanity. And but the way to serve the entire humanity, my reach is only to my own people. And with which I have a, a direct and immediate communication <coughs> and also capacity to reach out to them. But my aim is uh, not to <coughs> constrain the Indian people are more near and dear to me and uh, I should serve them by ignoring the interest of the larger humanity. On the contrary, for the benefit of the entire humanity, I must serve to my own people, with whom I have an immediate relationship and obligation. So this is a, an English uh, word, think broadly, act locally, this may be not a very uh, deep philosophical uh, proverb, but it has its own meaning. Because you are able to uh, reach out only to the local. And, uh, but <coughs> in your mind, you must have the understanding of your obligation to interact. <coughs> entire humanity, entire world. So therefore, one would argue that understanding of self is necessary to improve one's own life happiness of life, goodness of life, prosper of life, if one is very selfish. And I think in that way also. And the realization of self is also necessary if you are a believer of uh, any religion, any philosophy, <coughs> In that matter, you must know the 
nature of yourself, yourself according to your own tradition, <coughs> so that you can make your life better, your worldly life better, happy and prosper. At the same time, you can please your Creator, your God, and uh, become near to the Creator by understanding that the entire creation of the Creator are equal, same, and there is no room to uh, harming each other. They are all brothers and sisters. And uh, even the nature is uh, created by the Almighty for a purpose of the entire sentient being. The nature, I must live a uh, harmonious with nature. I must perform <coughs> my responsibilities to all with whom I am related. And the relation is being created by the Almighty. So therefore, I must not go against the wish of the Almighty. If you are a believer of that tradition who believes in the Creator, and then even you are a religious follower who do not believe in the Creator, who believe in the force of karma, the same way, Whatever current force you accumulate in this life, you have to face the result in the next life. And uh, therefore, I must be more violent. I must be uh, uh, cooperative and uh, uh, harmonious with the living beings and with the nature and to protect the environment, the world, the entire universe and also to make one's own spiritual journey and also worldly happiness, all this, I need to realize my existence the same way. If you are a non-believer, non-believers also like a happy life, meaningful life, and not a miserable life. To remain a happy life, first of all, you need a good health, and you need a peace of mind. That will uh, cannot dispute if you are a non-believer. Saying that I am not, I am not believing any religion or any philosophy, so therefore I do not care my own interest. That you can't say. And even the non believer cares one's own happy life and one's <coughs> own future, and also one's own uh, new generations. No one would like a misery for the children, for their own children. And if you are not. Uh, Realizing the interdependentness of yourself, which is not a, a religious philosophy, which is a reality, a, a fact of the ground. So you realize your interdependence with other <coughs> people, with the nature. If you realize that, that of your self-existence, then even a non-believer will care for the sake of yourself and for the sake of your new generation, your children, and for the sake of your friends, you will behave in the right way. So therefore, the understanding and knowing of self, how it exists, it exists interdependently and relatively, and it has a direct or indirect relation with the entire existence of the world, then your behavior and your dealing with the rest of the world 
we entirely changed. So therefore, it is considered to be necessary. We can argue in that way that it is necessary or it is better. So I'm not trying to uh, persuade you to believe that understanding is <coughs> necessary, absolutely necessary. What I'm trying to put before you is the relationship is a reality. Our existence is dependent <coughs> on relationship with nature and with other beings. And for that, if you want a happiness and a good life, you respect that relationship and do not destroy that relationship. If you preserve that relationship in proper way, the benefit is yours. This is an argument on which you may consider. This argument is uh, rational and valid, then you must try to understand yourself. And otherwise, you can completely ignore that it is a no-sense question. There is no one who do not understand oneself, and <coughs> who do not oneself. <coughs> By this way also, many people go, there is no, no harm. It may be causing harm in the long run for yourself, <coughs> but that is a common way. Today, the majority of the people do live on a foolishness. There are many foolishness we can see in this world, particularly in the developed world. I can make one example. I don't know the present. It was uh, 2010 <coughs> statistic. The atomic and the hydrogen weapons, destructive weapons, are accommodated by many uh, world, so called world powers, has the strength of destroying this earth 36 times. <laughs> then, what is logic? Once it is destroyed one, then the weapons also goes away. Then there are many people have no food, no shelter, no clothes, no education, no medicine, and not spending money on them, but a useless weapons are being curated and uh, stored. <coughs> And it can exploit it even accidentally also. They are not intentional. So these are absolutely foolishness. <coughs> so similarly, the humanity, why we cannot live friendly and cooperating with each other? Each nation is spending billions and billions of rupees on the name of <coughs> national security. And it is, has no end. There may not be any possibility of war, but national security cannot be always safe. We cannot compromise the question of national security. And on the other hand, there are Poverty, poor people who does not have even to properly feed their children or their own uh, food, clothes, medicine, education, many are deprived of them. So, this is now so called human stupidity in the 21st century. 
I, I think it will go on uh, endlessly. So in that way also, woman choose to go, it's okay. So now that finally we have a few minutes more. Um, it says uh, steps to move ahead. Steps to move ahead is uh, just begin to inquire, to think into words. The entire search of modern science and technology always directed outwardly. They never look into the oneself. In the Hindu Swaraj, Ranji described <coughs> civilization as uh, taking more care of body than the mind. And it is uh, one of the hints. Actually, the modern civilization has uh, destroyed many balances. So, the first step is uh, only looking outside and the, the growth <coughs> of material. I do not use here word development because we do not do anything developed. Develop means qualitatively making better. We are only quantitatively things are <coughs> productive more than the human needs. So therefore the human greed is the source of sustaining the modern. <coughs> so therefore the examination of inner world one's own mind, <coughs> and for that matter, the mind of the entire humanity, uh, that need to be examined, questioned, and look into, do I exist independent of everything? Can I exist without depending to anyone? And all these questions need to be uh, analyzed and examined, and that is only the step. If you are a believer, then you can do some spiritual practice to make your mind more concentrative and more sharper. And uh, for that, any system of meditation uh, can be adopted. And by spending 50 minutes or half an hour, your capacity to inquire into the inner world may be sharpened and increased. If you are no, no believer, then you have <coughs> a, a good health and balanced uh, mind. For that also, you have to come back to the natural self, natural self, natural self <coughs> to put, put aside all the indoctrinations given to you through education, through society, through human behavior, and try to think by yourself, your own uninfluenced and unconscious mind, search it and think about <coughs> that way. And make an independent rationality, not a prejudice as taught or as intolerant or as, as conditioned by other or, uh, external forces. Find out your original <coughs> mind Particularly, if you are a non-believer, you must be less conditioned. Otherwise, the religion, the philosophy, and the tradition, they may put so many blank faith or this and that on you. 
if you are not uh, wise enough, if you are really a good non-liberal, then you might have an independent way of thinking, independent way of uh, uh, searching with rationality. And uh, through that rationality, can you survive not depending any other living creature or the uh, universe or the planet. So where your interest and uh, your future generation's interest can be secured and can be saved. That can be examined. <coughs> that examination, that inquiry is the step they are taking. So thank you for your attention and uh, sorry for not being able to uh, make a very different presentation but what I have said might be uh, a stimulation to begin an inquiry by yourself and I think if there is time some comments or some observations, a few observations may be uh, included. Thank you very much. Helping us in understanding. But as a part of collective inquiry, I would like to know some more about the relationship between the dependency of the <coughs> and the outer world. So, my first query is that what is and what should be the relationship between self, mind, consciousness, and supreme consciousness? The next query is how can we define or describe a non visible Whether denying or denial of the existence of God means denial of everything, having no belief, having no faith. Third query is what is the relationship between self and our inner instinct. Fourth, self can be understood in interrelationship and interdependency of the world. So far I have understood these were your views. My query is that, that does it mean self has no independent existence? How can we explain the concept of reincarnation if the soul does not exist beyond the body? So these are some queries that have come to mind and I am very much hopeful that you will take trouble to explain these things so that I may perceive the things in totality. Thank you, sir. As I mentioned before, I do not have a preconceived <coughs> or ultimate answers to the questions. But the questions are very important. We can try to find that is the uh, Buddhist notion and uh, all the other <coughs> philosophical traditions do argue in that case uh, who comes from the previous life to this life and who goes from this life to next life and in this case the Buddhist conception is that also there is uh, no independent existence of self Yet, there is an interdependent self. 
that is uh, recorded in, uh, in <coughs> Indian language. Devari, Atma, Niratma, Swalakshinik Sata, Atma, do not exist. But interdependent and the designated Atma is there. That is the continuity of the subtle consciousness. Subtle consciousness is arising and, uh, and <coughs> disappearing because it is chanting. Each moment it arises and each moment it uh, passes away. It does not uh, permanent enter. But each moment has created the next moment. So continuum of uh, impermanent continuity of the consciousness. <coughs> that is the person who comes from the, it has no beginning, it's a, it has no end, it comes from the past life to this life and it goes from this life to next life. That is, in a simple word we can say the impermanent, ever-changing continuum of the <coughs> consciousness which is uh, ever changing, but having a continuum. Thank you. Thank you. It's a momentary uh, Basically, Buddhism uh, brings momentarism and therefore the concern that uh, the self is the combination between mind and body. Uh, without mind, we, Without mind, we cannot understand the uh, uh, with the body. Uh, we cannot understand the self. It is a uh, and more, and Buddhists also believe in the nirvikalpa uh, uh, And nirvikalpa kotoko is the inexplicable. How we explain the consciousness and how we know the other self? Myself uh, in the uh, in the modern uh, modern psychology, we know the self in the interpersonal. How we know the other self? Others are also the knowing actually the third point. I can know myself, but how you know the other self? But Buddhist philosophy is below, is uh, uh, they are admitted two kind of perception. One is Shabhi Kalpa Kaputtaka, another is Nirvi Kalpa Kaputtaka. Shabhi Kalpa Kaputtaka, another is Nirvi Kalpa Kaputtaka. Nirvi Kalpa Perception. Perception. So, Sarvikal Kutukha explain when something exists in someone, Nirvikal Kutukha is not the part of the Kutukha according to Buddhism. And Buddhism believe that momentarism and so as the combination between mind and body. And how we explain our consciousness, that means self, and another one, how we explain the other self in the language. The other self, we cannot understand the other self. Understand the other self. Now we can explain the other self. I think you this my point. I am not able to uh, very clearly understand what is your exact question. First of all, the Buddhist concept of self is not the combination of body and mind. Combination of body and mind is <coughs> the basis, the our number, and on which the uh, designation of self by thought and by word <coughs> that is the Vyavarika self. So, sometimes only mind is also a basis of uh, designating a self because uh, the others believe in the three realms, the Kamaloka, the Rupaloka, and the 
आरोप लोग इन आरोप लोग आलोक धातु देयर इज नो बॉडी देयर इज ओनली द माइंड एंड बट स्टिल देयर इज एन इंडिविजुअल देयर इज अ पर्सन द माइंड अलोन इज द बेसिस ऑफ दिस एंटिटी द पर्सन एंड ऑल द परसेप्शंस दैट मींस द प्रत्यक्ष माइंड प्रत्यक्ष माइंड इज नेसेसरी भी Difficult. The self cannot go with the uh, pratyaksh mind. Pratyaksh mind perceives the outer reality directly, and the subtle mind is a conceiving mind that does not touch the reality of the outside. It only deals with the image, and uh, the nibbana. प्रत्यक्ष और सविकल्प प्रत्यक्ष बोथ आर अ पार्ट ऑफ ह्यूमन माइंड एंड इट कैन नो द फादर कॉन्शियसनेस बाय टू वेज द फर्स्ट वे इज बाय द इन्फ्रेंस इन्फ्रेंस मींस यू कैन इन्फर द अदर पर्सन्स बिहेवियर other person's relationship to you other person's response to your actions that means the other person <coughs> do exist as you yourself exist and that is the influence when you are involved into the higher realm of the consciousness then you will able to see many hidden things by direct perception nibical uh, pratyaksh and uh, that is uh, we call we call it uh, the uh, perception of other person's mind that is uh, clearer minds and uh, this may be your question uh, उसका सरल अर्थ दो हो सकता है आत्मावादी लोगों के हिसाब से और अनात्मावादी के हिसाब से दोनों के लिए एक जैसा आत्मावादी के हिसाब से आत्मा दर्शन या आत्मा साक्षात का अर्थ ये है कि आप इस समय जिसको आत्मा समझ रहे हैं वो आत्मा नहीं है और उसके अतिरिक्त एक ऐसा आत्मा जो परमात्मा का एक अभिव्यक्त या एक अंश जिसको आप देखेंगे तो वो देखेंगे वो तो दोनों के संबंध परमात्मा को दर्शन करेंगे तो उससे आपकी जीवात्मा की जो परिस्थिति है वो एक व्यापक आत्मा की अंश है या अभिव्यक्त है ये उस परमात्मा ने विलीन हो सकता है इसके संस्कृत संस्कृतपन स्वर माने स्कंद स्कंद माने शरीर और चित्त संतति और शरीर और चित्त संतति के समूह ऊपर हम एक व्यक्ति का प्रजापित करते हैं जो व्यक्ति है ऐसा प्रजापित करते हैं उस प्रजापित मात्र से एक व्यक्ति के कार्य कर सकते हैं कर्म कर सकते हैं कर्म फल भोग सकते हैं उतना में ही आत्मा को मानते हैं उसके अतिरिक्त स्वाधीन निरपेक्ष आत्मा नहीं है 
सर्पेज सर्पेज अथवा एक प्रजापित आत्मा इस तरह से प्रत्येक संबंध आत्मा को देखेंगे उसको आत्मदर्शन की बात करेंगे अब दोनों का अर्थ यही है कि इस समय जो आप अहम के माध्यम से जिस बात को समझ रहे हैं वो नहीं है उसके अतिरिक्त एक व्यक्ति है वो देखेंगे उस बात को दर्शन कहा जा सकता है धर्म जो धारण करते हैं उसको धर्म देते हैं I feel that 
I'm very, very ordinary for this mom. And uh, a very funny life has been uh, assigned to me. If I sum up to say, since uh, <coughs> 20 years of age, when I come to India as a deputy, till today, now I'm 78 years old, I was not able to do anything which is of my choice. I do all the old things by accidentally or by compassion or by order of someone else or by wish of someone else. So therefore, there is no glory. Always been carried uh, by uh, external circumstances, and uh, in that I wasted all of my life. <laughs> 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 that is true. <laughs>